Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Michael Shapiro. I'm uh, an assistant professor and uh, the assistant trial psychiatry clinic director at the University of Florida Trial Psychiatry Clinic. Thank you for letting us interview you for this class. Can you briefly summarize your path from undergraduate till now? Um, I went to undergraduate here at the University of Florida and this is not a common path but I actually um, applied for and got into the junior honors medical program. Um, that means basically my last year of undergraduate was combined with my first year of medical school and I didn't have to take the MCAT, so that was awesome. I think they only accept 12 kids a year, so it's hard to get into, but it's a really good path to go into. Um, so what that meant was, the downside of that was I had to go to medical school here, which isn't that bad, but I didn't really get to interview anywhere else. Um, so I, when I applied to residency for psychiatry, I applied to about eight or nine programs. Um, but decided to stay here at UF, UF and um, for psychiatry and then wanted to do child psychiatry and I also stayed here for that and I got a job here and I've been here for a long time. <laughs> Alrighty, do you have any tips for undergraduates? Um, have fun but take it seriously. Um, if you're really interested in medical school, um, show that you're interested in it, do some volunteer experiences, try to get into some research experiences, um, work hard. Um, they do look at your grades, even though probably what you learn in organic chemistry doesn't really matter. Um, but just take it seriously and pursue what you are really interested in and really enjoy. Um, don't let anybody tell you what the right specialty or right field is to do you should do what you're going to enjoy um, and be really interested in. Okay, so uh, is there a particular reason why you chose psychiatry over other specialties? Um, the, the easiest answer was that I loved it the most. Um, when I did the rotation and even when I had an introductory class in, in human behavior, first year medical school was clearly something that interested me and I really liked it. Um, but once I went to medical school, I, I wanted to be more objective about it too, and the three things that I wanted out of a field were that it was interesting, that I felt like I helped people, and that it was fun. Um, and the three fields I, I was considering were psychiatry, pediatrics, and neurology. Um, pediatrics to me, which is dealing with kids, is um, it was fun, and I did feel like I helped a lot of people, but it actually wasn't very interesting to me. And that's because, personally, the medicine of pediatrics to me was boring. Um, antibiotics are not my thing, asthma is not my thing. Um, it, it just wasn't interesting enough for me, even though I like the kids. Um, neurology, I thought, was very interesting. And I actually had a lot of fun with neurology. Um, but I didn't always get the sense that I helped a lot of people. A lot of the patients you see um, are elderly and have a lot of chronic degenerative diseases like Lou Gehrig syndrome or ALS or myasthenia gravis or multiple sclerosis, um, patients who have strokes or Alzheimer's. Um, it didn't have enough seeing people get better for me that I wanted. Um, psychiatry did all those for me. Um, it was interesting, I enjoyed it, and I really felt like I could make a difference and improve people's lives. Okay, so did you choose child and adolescent psychiatry over adult because you were also interested in peds? Yeah, probably. I, I, when I went to medical school, I actually went in wanting to do pediatrics. So I was interested in kids before psychiatry. Um, but then I got really interested in, in, in psychiatry. And probably, probably when I started psychiatry, I still wanted to do pediatric psychiatry, child psychiatry. Um, I still like adult psychiatry more than pediatrics. So I still like psychiatry more than just, you know, asthma and stuff like that. Um, but I like child psychiatry a lot more than adult psychiatry for a few reasons. One, I do like kids more. Um, I also feel like it's easier to see change in kids, partly because they change anyway. Um, as kids grow up, they change. But I think you can see more changes and more improvement in their lives as they grow up. Um, and this is going to sound weird, but I think they're more honest, like, uh, and, and that, I like that. Um, so kids will tell you when they hate stuff and when things suck and, um, I don't know, I, I appreciate that about them. And they honestly seem to want help and want to get better. 
and I see a lot of change in them. Um, so I love working with kids. Can you go through um, a typical day? So, well, now that I, I'm a faculty member, um, uh, so I guess this will be a little bit different than people who do private practice. So I work at a university setting. So on Mondays, um, I'm actually the attending of the day. What that means is all of the trainees, so the residents and fellows who see kids, discuss all their patients with me. Um, so I basically sit in my office and I get about 20 or 30 times residents and fellows come into my office and discuss the patients that they're seeing. Um, I discuss it with them and make sure that the medications they're using are appropriate at appropriate doses, that they're monitoring for side effects, um, that I agree with the diagnosis and the treatment. If they're doing therapy, I discuss what kind of therapy they're doing. Um, so that's my Monday. I do that all day on Monday. Um, Tuesday mornings are the lecture days for the fellows, so usually maybe once a week. Um, it's four hours, so usually like one hour a week I'll give them a lecture. So I actually just came back from lecturing them on interpersonal psychotherapy for depressed adolescents. So I went over with them kind of pros and cons of that therapy style. Um, sometimes I'll lecture them about medications and why we use them or why we wouldn't use them. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday afternoon, I actually still get to see my own patients. Um, and that was actually a really important reason for me staying here, is I like seeing my own patients. I still do therapy with them. I treat them with medications. Um, so that's a, that's a big deal for me. Um, Wednesday mornings, I work at um, a clinic downtown called Family Preservations, which is a, a low-income Medicaid clinic. Um, I only do that a half day a week, um, but I'm the, only, I'm the only doctor there. So I get a really good feel for the patients there, and um, it's nice to see them do well also. And then Thursday and Friday, I actually work at several juvenile detention centers. Um, I work at the Alachua County Juvenile Detention Center, and I work at a juvenile detention center and a correctional facility facility in Ocala. Um, at the detention centers, I usually basically see any kids who came in who were previously on psychiatric medications, um, see if they need their medications if they're not taking them, make sure they're not having side effects if they are taking them. Um, at the correctional facility, which is a much longer stay, like six to nine months, um, I actually do a little bit more of an assessment on do these, these kids need treatment or not. And um, there's really good follow-up there because obviously they're there for nine months, so I see them probably like every month and see how they're doing. Um, so I think the lesson is child psychiatrists are very busy. Um, they do a lot of different clinical activities. It's very rare nowadays for a child psychiatrist to just work in one place. Um, they do a lot of traveling. Um, so I think I work at five different clinical sites a week. Um, so that seems like a lot, and when I first started it seemed like a lot, but I appreciate the variety. Um, it, it gives me like a good sense of perspective from dealing with the multiple kinds of patients that I see and I, and I really enjoy all of it. Now you mentioned that you do therapy. Is that a typical thing for psychiatrists? In our program, yes. Um, so we are a training program. Um, so we try to train you know, the residents and fellows in therapy. Um, it is something that I personally feel like psychiatrists should know how to do. Um, but I do know there is a reputation that psychiatrists do mostly medication management. And to an extent, I understand where that comes from. Um, there's a big push from insurance companies to not have psychiatrists do therapy. Um, you know, they'd rather reimburse a social worker or a therapist or a psychologist to do it. Um, and in private practice, where I think there's a bit more of a push to make your own money, um, a lot of the way insurances work, you can see probably you know, four or five kids and just do medications in an hour and make the same amount of money as doing therapy with one kid for an hour. And um, personally for me, that isn't what would make me happy. I really like talking to kids. I like having a good relationship with kids. Um, I have clinics where I basically do medication management, but getting to really talk to kids and help them with their problems is really what I love doing. And that's actually one of the reasons I stayed here is because I have the opportunity to do that here. Um, I think in private practice you can do that, but it's a lot harder. Um, there's a big, there's a lot more of a push to make money and finance your own business, and um, it's nice being here in the university. And uh, um, I like, I like therapy. And I like seeing my own patients. I'm trying to get a lot of the residents and fellows into doing therapy. Therapy is hard, um, but I think it's an important part of treating kids and treating people. What is your favorite part of the job? Just talking to the kids. Um, 
noticing very subtle improvements. Um, you know, I, I think when, when you're used to seeing somebody all the time, it's hard to notice differences. Um, but a kid who's a little bit able to talk about their feelings, or a kid who um, stood up to a bully for the first time, or a kid um, who is laughing, who like used to come in and be very, very depressed all the time, um, a kid who um, used to be really, really scared and then comes in and they're not really scared about stuff anymore, um, and just really into getting to know the kids. Um, I know it sounds very scary, but I, I try to treat the kids as norm, like as normal kids as I can. You know, they're 14, 15, 16, 9, they go to school, they have friends, they have interests. Um, I really enjoy just getting to know who they are. And I think that's actually a really important way that kids get better, is that they get to feel like individuals, they get to feel like somebody accepts them, they get to feel, you know, who I am is okay, um, they get to be close to somebody. Um, and I really enjoy seeing the kids sort of grow up. I just like talking to them. Uh, what are some daily challenges you face in this job? Um, well, the kids are so sometimes the major challenge. Uh, sometimes they don't, they, don't, they don't always want to talk. Um, I had a patient come in last week who I've been seeing pretty much every week for a year and a half. And uh, they just said, I don't want to talk about my feelings today. And I sort of called her out on that, that that wasn't very helpful. Um, sometimes kids, um, sometimes kids don't get better. Um, and I think that's true in basically every field of medicine. You know, some kids get cancer. Um, some people have chronic kidney disease. Some people have HIV. Um, sometimes it's, it's just a matter of keeping them afloat, um, hoping they don't get worse. Um, but seeing kids who really suffer and are really in bad home situations is hard. Um, knowing that I can't do a lot about it, um, sometimes I just have to listen to them about how, what a bad situation there is. Um, Sometimes having to deal with multiple perspectives is very hard. You know, I'll have a kid tell me one thing and I'll have a parent telling me something else. And deep down I know that it, the truth is in the middle somewhere. Um, but I have to balance, you know, the kids' wants and needs and the parents' wants and needs. Um, that's, I think, what makes child psychiatry really hard is you're never really dealing with just one person. Um, a kid does not exist by themselves. They, they're part of a family and you really have to reach out to the family and get that involved and it's sort of like trying to get multiple people who disagree with each other to find a common ground. Um, and I think that's really difficult to do and sometimes that's really challenging. Um, but there's never a day I don't like what I do. It's challenging and it's hard, um, but I love it and I, and I enjoy coming to work every day. Can you describe a typical patient? Is there a typical patient? Um. There's a few kinds of typical patients. I think it also depends on how old the, kid, the kids are. So probably like a typical 8 to 10 year old would be a kid who has ADHD, a little too hyper, uh, runs around, doesn't pay attention, has some oppositional behaviors, argumentative, defiant, um, doesn't follow the rules. Um, the older adolescents I think are a little bit more there's a little bit of depression, maybe some irritability, um, not talking to their parents, keeping to themselves, getting into some risky behaviors. Um, kids who are anxious, uh, maybe socially anxious, don't really reach out and talk to kids their age, too shy. Um, sometimes there, there are kids who are way too physically aggressive and violent, and um, unfortunately that happens sometimes too. Those are hard kids to, to treat. Um, I don't know if there's there, there's a classic. Th those are the most probably common examples that I see, and we see all of them. You know, rarely you'll see a kid with uh, what we think is schizophrenia um, or bipolar disorder. Um, kids with autism we see frequently, um, and we we kind of see everything pretty much. Um, can you tell us what your favorite patient story is? Um, gosh, my favorite patient stories. I don't know, they're not always very happy. Um, I've learned a lot from all of my patients, and I always remember what I learn a lot. Um, I remember the patient I saw that made me know I was going to go into child psychiatry. Um, I was actually doing my pediatrics rotation in medical school, so I was, I was just in a regular pediatrics clinic. Um, there happened to be a child psychiatrist who came to the clinic every other week. And I was really interested in psychiatry at the time, so I said, can I, can I come with you? 
and there was an eight-year-old kid we were going to see who was being evaluated to see if they had ADHD or not. They were having difficulty in school, um, they weren't concentrating, their, their grades had slipped, and I guess the mom thought the kid might have had ADHD. And what happened was actually the kid's grandmother died, like about six months ago. And um, the grandmother was actually really, really involved in this kid's life because the mom worked. So the grandmother was almost like a second mom. And it was the mom's mom. What happened was the mom was also having difficulty dealing with her mom's death. So whenever the kid tried to talk about it, the mom actually told him not to because it was too upsetting. So in a way, it was like not letting the kid grieve properly. And the child psychiatrist I was with explained this to the mom that it's okay to talk about the grieving of his grandmother. And she told the mom to like talk to him about his grandmother every day. And you know, what did he miss about his grandma? What did he like about his grandma? Um, and, for her, and for the mom to try to do a little bit more things that the grandma used to do. And also gave some support to the mom about how she must be also really sad that her grandmother died, that her mother died. Um, I don't know why, but that to me was like, that's what I want to do. It, it was very, I, I mean, when we started talking to the kid and he was talking about his grandmother, it was very clear that he was depressed and didn't have ADHD. And, um, you know, I think that's another hard part of what we do is a lot of things look the same. But the reason why he wasn't focusing is because he was really depressed and his grandma died. And when the psychiatrist was able to explain to the mom what was going on and what they can do to be better, and the kid actually cried a little bit about his grandmother and then felt better, I just was like, that's what I want to do. I just knew. Um, so a lot of my job, which I think is really hard, is allowing kids to process their feelings, even if the feelings are bad and they don't like them, you know, anger and sadness, but just giving kids a space to be themselves, I think is really important. And that's what I feel like she did. And that's what I try to do a lot. So as soon as I saw that kid, I'm like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't know if everyone else has that kind of eureka moment, but that, that, that was it for me. Okay, so can you talk a little bit more about how you work with psychologists? We are actually in the same building as psychologists, um, so that's really convenient. You know, sometimes when we see kids and we think, um, you know, maybe they have a learning disorder, or maybe they have ADHD but we're not sure, it's hard to tell between ADHD and anxiety, um, sometimes we'll refer to psychology to do testing so they can do like a battery of tests and see, you know, the, you know, what's the kid's IQ, how are they achieving in school, does that match up, are they having trouble with reading or writing, um, what do they, I actually like their second opinion a lot, you know, do they think the kid has ADHD or depression or, or what the deal is, um, and they also do a lot of therapy, obviously, so kids who for some reason, you know, I can't fit them in my schedule, or... I actually feel like the psychologists sometimes do therapy better than we do. I will refer to the therapists. Um, they do a lot of therapy for anxiety disorders and obsessive compulsive disorder and eating disorders. So if the kid has that, I'll refer them over there. Um, and then I get to follow up with them, like, okay, how's the kid doing? And we get to like touch base and coordinate and make sure you know we're both seeing the same thing in the kid and the family and how we're co uh, combining treatment. Um, so I think it's great. We actually didn't used to be in the same building, and that was hard. Um, but now it's like I can go across, across the hall and be like, hey, how's so-and-so doing? Um, so I, I think it's great. I, th I think we need more collaboration with them. I mean, we basically see the same kids. Um, I think we, work, we look at them in different ways. Um, you know, for example, as a psychiatrist, I have the option of considering a medication management, whereas psychologists don't. So on their end, I think they have to consider, do I need to refer this patient to a psychiatrist? You know, maybe they need a little bit more help, maybe they need medications. Um, so I think we have to work hand-in-hand hand all the time, and I think it's, I think it's working really well. Um, I enjoy working with them a lot. Is it typical for psychiatrists and psychologists to work together? Um, I think it depends on the setting. I think in academic centers it is. Um, you know, very commonly in academic centers there's multidisciplinary teams, so like when you work in the hospital there's um, an MD, there's nursing, there's social work, there's occupational therapy, there's counselors, and you all work together and you all discuss how to help patients. Um, certainly in our clinic we have that. I think that's a little harder in rural areas. Um, sometimes you kind of make do with what you have. You know, sometimes there's one social worker for the whole town and, the, and, the, and they do the therapy. Sometimes there's just an MD and they don't have a social worker and the MD has to do a little bit of it. Um, so I really think it depends where you are and what the resources are, but obviously the more resources, the better. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the clinics I work at, um, I'm the only MD, and it's actually a clinic of social workers and counselors. 
and they actually do like in-home counseling also and they they're really great at what they do and I basically just kind of manage the meds and I touch base with them on what I how I think the kids are doing um, but I think you know working with different um, specialties and other mental health clinicians is really important um, as a psychiatrist do you do any research or are there research opportunities for psychiatrists? Um, yeah, you can. Um, you guys can't see this, but I actually have eight of my, I guess you can look, uh, published papers that are hanging on my wall. It was not my idea to hang them, but I was told it would make me appear more prestigious. Um, those papers are all sort of case studies, where, um, which is kind of the easiest research paper to write, but it's like, hey, we saw this really weird, interesting thing, let's write it up, because there's not a lot about that. Um, we actually just submitted a proposal to the IRB um, trying to study whether or not any of the medications we give to kids um, help them lose weight because we actually end up putting a lot of kids on medications that make them gain weight and we don't like that. Um, so sometimes we'll add medicines to hopefully help offset that, but we're actually going to try to review all of our records and see if that's actually working or not. Um, but you know, we, we try to be collaborative, so like I've co-written some papers with some of the other fellows here and we all try to do a part. Um, there is the ability to do sort of more classic bench research with research on uh, medications and pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. That personally is not for me. Um, but I do try to be involved and um, if there's anything interesting, uh, I try to write it up and I try to motivate everyone else to, to get their name out there and do some publishing. Um, I'm actually going to present a poster at a conference in December. That's going to be the first time I do that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely room. Um, at least here, no one really forces you to do it, which I think is good, but they're very encouraging. Um, in medical school, I actually did research in the neurology departments. Um, it was actually on Parkinson's patients who developed compulsive gambling. It was actually due to one of the medications they were on. But it was really interesting to me, and I contacted one of the neurologists, and he was like, yeah, let's do it. And um, I worked with him for a summer, and it was really great. It was Dr. Fernandez, I gotta give him. Uh, props for that. Um, but yeah, it, there's a lot of opportunities. It's really just a matter of um, being interested, putting the work in, and uh, getting people to help you out. But it's very doable. Do you have any closing remarks for us? Um, do, do what you really love doing. Um, even if it's hard, and even if it's a lot of work, um, you know, honestly, the lifestyle for a psychiatrist is not that bad compared to a lot of other specialties in medicine, so it's a little easy for me to say, just do what you love. Um, a lot of people I know really love surgery, but they were afraid of the lifestyle and working long hours. Um, if you're doing what you love, the hour's not that bad. Um, and I actually know some people who went into surgery and they work really hard hours and they love what they do, and they wouldn't do anything different. Um, I think whatever you end up doing is going to be hard work and it's going to take a lot of effort and I don't think you should go through all that hard work and effort and not end up doing what you love doing. It should be worth it. Um, and the hard is what makes it really great. Um, the fact that it is hard, the fact that it takes you practice and time and, and years to really hone what you want to do, um, that's what makes it a really, a really great thing to do because not everybody can do it. Um, but make sure you love it. Make sure it's something you enjoy. Um, I think that's actually the most important thing. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you guys.